Wednesday, December 14th. You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. The weather map is a precious jewel this evening, a weather enthusiast's dream. There's an enormous amount of weather that's going on in this country right now. More significantly, there's a unique synoptic setup which is taking place in the country as a whole. If you look at the Midwest and the East Coast as a whole, it's a unique setup. And if you look at just the Midwest, it's a super unique setup. If you add the East Coast to the Midwest, the East Coast could be included in this a precious jewel. I think it's a rarity. And it, each system by itself are powerhouse systems. And they're, the tracks they're taking, the amount of time that they're staying in one area, and the enormous impacts that they're having on this country are really un, it's really remarkable it really is and it's only going to get better it's hard to say that actually it's hard to say that it's only going to get better but the impacts that the synoptic weather setup is going to have that will increase for next week let's just start right away with what's going on right now here in chicago here in Chicago, this might be a city where people might just think right now that everything's normal. It's just raining, that's all. It's just raining. Well, everybody knows that what went on in Spearfish, North, uh, Spearfish South Dakota, that wasn't normal earlier today. That's going to be all over the news. The 30 inches of snow, 25 inches of snow over there as of earlier today. 30 inches of snow over other parts of South Dakota. There's a lot going on with the Black Hills over there, with the wind directions. They're, they're causing the, the heavy snow is continuously fluctuating almost like it's almost like a lake effect snow event and i was never aware of this until today the up the areas which are receiving precipitation enhanced precipitation rates because the city is along an upslope along in a hill where they're getting a wind against the hill they're receiving heavier precipitation rates now when those winds shift the heavier precipitation rates then move on to a different city because there's now a different city that's receiving the effects of that upslope wind. And then the there's another city which is receiving a drying effect from a downslope wind. Now, apparently these Black Hills, they're not like the Rocky Mountains, which totally destroy the system. The system continues no matter where you are, no matter what side of the Black Hills you're on, it's going to be snowing especially in a system like this. Just the question is, is it going to be heavy snow or light snow? And it places all around you, it's going to be moderate snow. Relatively speaking, you're going to have whatever pace the snow is falling at in the state as a whole or in that area as a whole, you're going to have an enhanced snowfall area by the Black Hills. You're also going to have a decreased snowfall rate by the Black Hills as well. And that's going to continuously shift sometimes. And today, that's what was happening over there. And Rapid City, for a while, was in the downslope section. Uh, we have... There, there were, you know, we have places uh, which have received 30 inches of snow in South Dakota. We have other areas that got 25 inches. There's more snow on the way. Let's take a step back over here and come back to Chicago. So you have to have an in-depth understanding, perhaps, of the synoptic setup or just understand what's going on over here to appreciate what's, what is going on over here. Why is Chicago getting precipitation? So here's what happened. We have a low pressure system. It's a Colorado low. It's a Colorado low. Usually those things are, you have a low pressure system that's over in the Pacific Ocean, sometimes a, th a thousand miles out. It eventually comes onto the coast and then the system kind of falls apart as it goes over the Rockies. The system redevelops over just what the National Weather Service will always 
called the Lee side of the Rockies. It's just to the east of the Colorado Rockies. The system redevelops, usually in the Colorado area. And then it takes a storm track from there. A lot of times it will go... A Colorado low is pretty common. The, uh, the alternative is a panhandle hook. Those things tend, at least here in Chicago, those are the storms that bring the heaviest snow to the Chicago area because those are the ones that collide with the most amounts of Gulf moisture because it has ample time to collide with the Gulf moisture because it takes a track like a hook. The storm goes down to Oklahoma, to the Panhandle, Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle. It first takes a dip in before it moves north. Usually the Colorado low just moves north or northeast. But a Panhandle hook is it first dips around there. So it spends more time by the Gulf of Mexico. Therefore, there is more moisture. Well, this storm system didn't need to do that to get all of its moisture because the system is moving so slowly. So we had a Colorado low. The Colorado low moved east, <clears throat> excuse me, then north, then northeast, then east, different directions, north, a general motion to the northeast. But it's been stuck around South Dakota really all day today, and it remains there. Okay. So what happens in a situation like that is you have a warm front to the which extends to the southeast of the low pressure system and you have the arctic air on the back side you have the gulf moisture so you have this severe weather outbreak that takes place in the southeast section of this whole system so that's what's been happening last night even as early as monday already we had severe weather in the in the south but last night we had it in louisiana mississippi we had portions of texas and Tennessee, areas like that. Tonight, we have it again. We, are, we have a currently, as I speak, we have a tornado warning in effect for Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, and we have other severe thunderstorm warnings. There's currently 32 advisories and warnings in effect, different, different types of advisories and warnings in effect for this country. It's been pretty stable at 32 for the past, for quite a while. And 32 is, is a lot. That's a lot of, of advisories. I have seen it more, but... 32 is a lot. So we have that low pressure. It's going to produce, you know, we have a blizzard warnings. Blizzard, it comes on the backside. And we had blizzard warnings for places, as pointed out earlier, that got less than six inches of snow because of the high wind gusts. There's winter storm warnings. There's winter weather advisories. You have the winters, you have the tornado watches, the warnings, the severe thunderstorm warnings, all that. We also have uh, some blowing snow advisories. A lot of different stuff is happening. Okay, so that's normal. It's not, it's a little bit, it is more intense than usual, but we've been seeing that over the past probably 10 months already, going back to April, maybe even before. The Dakotas have been getting these low, pre these Colorado lows that have been dumping two feet of snow. It's been a pattern. It's been, this is at least the third, we're three for three over here. It's since April. April we had one, we got another one a month ago, and now we have one again. So these Colorado lows have been producing that. So at this point, it's not really so unusual. It's happened already a few times within the past year. Okay. And then you have the severe weather outbreaks, which everybody's familiar with. Uh, that's what goes on in the south central states. The risks have been higher than usual. They have been higher than usual. And it's taking, the risks are also taking place a few weeks later than usual. To have these high risks already this far into the year is, makes it even more unusual. But this has also been happening. Tornado Alley has been moving east over the past 30 years. The number of tornadoes has gone down in the plains and has gone up over in the south central states. So we now have Tornado Alley. It does not include St. Louis yet, but it's getting close. It does include Memphis, Tennessee right now. It never used to include Memphis, Tennessee, but it no longer includes many places in Oklahoma. Briefly, I'll say that there's a drought, a tremendous, the, tr the tremendous drought in the desert southwest. So climatologists believe that the, the lack of moisture over there is affecting the tornado development in the plains. There's not enough, enough moisture. So the tornadoes develop a little bit further east. Okay, so that could be an explanation. Anyways, so we have all that going on and we hear about that and 
Okay, this, then what usually happens is you have a secondary area of low pressure, which develops off in the mid-Atlantic area, usually off the coast of North Carolina. That's also happening. Okay, fine. There, that's also going to be a tremendous storm. That's going to be a tremendous storm. That's also going to produce nothing, nothing historical. There's nothing historical being forecasted right now for the East Coast that I'm aware of. This is a, it is going to be a classic nor'easter. It's going to be a nor'easter. Classic or not, it's a nor'easter. It's going to produce heavy rain for the East Coast, more than an inch, maybe even two inches for the East Coast. And then on the back side, that precipitation will be falling as snow. So, Locations we'll see, uh, usually you get one to two feet for the East Coast in these types of situations. But in this case, uh, those numbers might be for, you might have a county or two that gets that amount. But some of it, there's not enough cold air at this point. So 6 to 12 inches seems to be a reasonable amount, it, widespread 6 to 12 inches in the bullseye. There always could be a localized high. We also have possible ice storms from this and ice storms are extremely tricky to forecast. So it's, it's nothing super unique. Baltimore, Maryland happens to be a city that's big on ice storms. They happen to be, it's difficult to get an ice storm, even in Baltimore. But if you are to have an ice storm, Baltimore is the place where it happens. And it's very difficult to forecast these things. It's also very easy to issue an advisory if there's any type of Suffolk at all, any type of doubt. So we have advisories right now in effect for Silver Spring, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Washington, D.C., but <clears throat> but whether there actually is freezing rain that actually accumulates, that's another story. There have been tr- phenomenal ice storms in that area in past times when they weren't even forecasting it. And the other way around also, vice versa. There probably will be some areas in the northern and western sections, probably away from the city, that will get some type of freezing rain, at least a little bit, before it melts. Okay, but generally a rainy event for that area. So all of this is pretty much normal, at least in terms of what they're forecasting. What is unusual is to have a secondary area of low pressure develop in the Midwest. So really that area of low pressure on the East Coast in this situation, the term secondary isn't really accurate anymore. That's already a third area, if there there is such a thing. That's a... You have the secondary area of low pressure developed this afternoon in southern Illinois, maybe even a little bit further south than that. Not only that, it's really taking over the whole storm, and that has now become the main storm system, which is actually is taking a storm track that isn't too far off from putting Chicago in a, an accumulating snow for tonight. It's really not that far off. And that accumulating snow forecast has been trending south. Over time, the trends have been going further and further south. We now have, in terms of snowfall accumulation in the Midwest, not the plains. We're talking about Wisconsin. We now have a classic Midwest storm, something that would come out of a panhandle hook. In terms of the snowfall accumulations, if you don't look at how it developed or before it developed, you don't look at that. You just look at... Right now, an area, a strong area of low pressure, not just strong, it's actually, that's not the right word. The right word is rapidly intensifying low pressure. The, 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 the pace of the intensity is rap, so rapid, this would qualify as what's called a bombogenesis on the East Coast. It's the, the pace is more than one millibar per hour, more than one millibar per hour. To be qualified as a bombogenesis, it has to continue at that pace for 24 hours. I don't know if it's going to do that, but it's going to be going, it's going to be intensifying at that pace for six, seven hours at least, maybe more than that. That is what's going to be producing heavy to very heavy snow tonight north of Chicago, but not that far north of Chicago. Snowfall rates of one to two inches an hour is forecasted right now for Wisconsin. This should be pointed out that this was not in the forecast earlier. This is something new that has developed. Although there may have been snow, which was in the forecast earlier for these locations, but the intensity of it is something new. This is something new. 
6 to 12 inches in the bullseye of this system going from in central Wisconsin. Snowfall rates even in the Wisconsin Dells of 1 to 2 inches an hour is forecasted after midnight tonight. Snowfall in the Chicago area, the precipitation might also change over to snow. What's happening over here, so it's a strange thing to have a secondary area of low pressure. Also, the first area of low pressure is still there. It never moved. The thing is just there. It's still snowing over there. In fact, this eventually... This area of low pressure is intensifying rapidly, and there's a chance for thunderstorms here in Chicago tonight. So we are now in the midst of a thunderstorm here in Chicago. It's now night, and I just heard the thunder. I wasn't sure if that was going to happen, but there was the possibility of that happening. I want to, if there is, if there is to be a bust in the forecast, what could happen in theory tonight is the rain could change over to snow even as far south as Chicago, what's happening is we have something called dynamic cooling. We don't have enough Arctic air on the backside in this area for the rain to change over to snow. But what we do have is dynamic cooling. That's, we have the the updraft, the forcing, the ascent of the forcing is so intense and the precipitation rates are so intense, it's going to bring, it's going to produce its own cold air That's what's happening with the system, and it's going to bring that cold air from aloft down to the surface. That creates a big question mark. There's doubts. That's what's doing it. Nobody really knows for sure what's going to be happening in the state of Wisconsin. There will be heavy snowfall rates, but exactly when the precipitation is going to change over to snow is not known. And exactly how much precipitation will still be left, those things are still not known. Meteorologists are pretty confident that nothing significant, nothing significant is going to be happening in Chicago. That's what the thinking is right now, other than a very significant rain event, which could produce flooding and even may cause flooding of rivers. That's because it's happening. It's not only that we're getting more than an inch of rain tonight, perhaps even up to two inches of rain. That, that also is something that this is much stronger than what was originally forecasted. It's also it's happening at a time of the year when the evaporation rates are low and also there's very little vegetation. Like you just have the evergreen trees. I so you're going to have a lot of runoff and a lot of this is going to go into the rivers. So there could be some river flooding and some significant stuff that goes on later tonight. That's going to be happening from a few hours before midnight, which is now already actually until a few hours after midnight precipitation there's high confidence in the precipitation ending by 6 a.m tomorrow morning now this low pressure system then goes west directly west the only the only thing that moves west is our hurricanes that's but right so but (laughs) that's the only thing that moves we're directly west well, this this is moving directly west, and it's going right into the original low pressure system. I don't even know how to, I don't I don't know the correct terminology of how to, what what exact. I, I just know that this piece of energy, which is now stronger than the first and intensifying quicker than the first, and the first piece of energy which is weakening, what's going to happen is that p- first piece of energy is going to intensify because of the second piece of energy, and it looks like they are colliding again. So whether you're going to call the precipitation that's going to redevelop, the intensity will redevelop over in Minnesota and even in the Dakotas, whether that's a result of the second low pressure system or the first just intensifying, I don't know what the exact correct terminology is on that. But the basic idea is the same. You have... You have this secondary area of low pressure, which has ample access to Gulf moisture, and is producing also a severe weather outbreak on the southeast side because the first storm system is in a weakening phase. It already has an occluded low pressure system. So really, in a normal situation, that first low pressure system 
would block the Arctic air from creating a snowstorm with the secondary area of low pressure. But the secondary area of low pressure is intensifying so quickly that it's producing dynamic cooling. So we have another snowstorm taking place by the second piece of low pressure. Not only that, that snowstorm is moving, it's moving backwards right into cities that got the first snowstorm. So... If people are just listening to the forecast without, so you may not pick up on this. All you may hear is that, yeah, there was a snowstorm that was expected to start Tuesday and was going to last all the way through the end of the week. But the thing is, is that this is very different. This is what's actually happening in reality is is different. The original, what was going to happen was there was going to be a period, even two periods of heavy snow, but the... And then the precipitation would continue on and off for the rest of the week. Light snow showers on and off for the rest of the week. That's still going to be continuing. But we have really, it's two, in a certain way, it's really a separate storm system. Another 6 to 12 inch powerhouse classic Midwestern storm system is actually going to be moving into Minnesota again. It's moving into Minnesota again. Not, it's coming from the east. Even the precipitation, it's not even wraparound. It's not even – sometimes wraparound moisture is, uh, is when you have the precipitation moves from east to west. This isn't – the system itself is moving from east to west. We're going to – sure, we're going to have the wraparound afterwards, and we're going to see more light snow, two to four inches of additional light snow when the actual storm departs or deteriorates. But – that's two to four inches occurring over a a long period, a day or two. It's going to be really light snow. The main systems we have, you know, I I don't know exactly. Some city could get seriously buried in snow. It's similar to the, you know, in terms of the length, there are similarities between this and the lake effect snow event that went on in Buffalo. The snow, just the snow to water ratios are a lot less. So the, the in terms of the amount of moisture, it's cert- this is more really. We have another thing is that the the forecasted snow to water ratios are on, on average of ten to one earlier today. It actually ended up being seventeen to one for many places in the Dakotas and Minnesota. So you have a lot more snow that fell than what was originally forecasted. At this point, the snowfall tonight is going to be heavier than what happened last night. This is actually going to end up being the main storm. That's for the Midwest. This is the main storm. Perhaps at one time, the thinking was that yesterday's low pressure was going to be the main storm. At one time, the thinking was that the main storm would be Tuesday, leftovers Wednesday, and then leftovers of the leftovers for Thursday, Friday, and perhaps even beyond. We now have... We had a serious storm that went through Tuesday. We have another storm which developed as an offshoot of the first, but this one is going to end up being even stronger than the first that's moving through the area tonight. And this one is very close to affecting the Chicago area, much closer than anybody realizes. And the trends are going south on this one. So and I'm talking about the snow. Uh, now, We're going to move on. At this point, the only people listening to this podcast are probably those that have a serious interest in the weather. And those who do have a serious interest in the weather are probably listening uh, at full attention because there's a lot going on here. And most people have turned the podcast off by now. So I turned it off a long time ago. (laughs) If you're not... so, So now that I know my audience here is has an interest in the weather for sure so we're going to continue over here and okay we have let's let's go on to the east it's a question of there's so much to talk about where do you go to next 
Okay, so we go on to the East Coast. We have a similar situation taking place in regards to dynamic cooling going on by the East Coast as well. That's what's going to be responsible for the snowstorm. We do have ex- Arctic air on the back of the system, on the back of system number one. System number one will take over at some point. The colder air will make it to the East Coast, will make it, and it will make it to the East Coast while there still is precipitation. It, we have both going on. For the East Coast, there's going to be dynamic cooling initially that will cause a changeover to snow, and eventually there will be Arctic air that's going to move into the region. By the time it hits the East Coast, I don't even know if you can really call it Arctic air, it's, but it will be cold enough for snow. So that's what we have going on right now. Okay. Now let's go on for next week. Next week is a big week to talk about. There might be something historical going on next week. Uh, something that that's just uh, people, it's really unbelievable. It's something that people just, it's hard to believe. But we have an Arctic outbreak coming straight from Siberia, coming into the plains a very high confidence I don't know how to put the word very on it but earlier today both the GFS and the European Computer Month both of them were forecasting extreme bitter cold in the Chicago area both in the Chicago area and the the main the core of the cold isn't going to be in Chicago but both of them there was consistency it's like everything is chaotic. This one says that. But all of a sudden, when it comes to the end of next week, the models come into agreement about this bitter cold air coming from Siberia. Now, you might read from National Weather Service that there's a lot of disagreement amongst the models, and therefore we don't know what's going to happen. But let me explain something. The disagreement is not about whether there's Arctic air coming from Siberia. The disagreement is about how cold will the Arctic, how much below zero will it be? It's, so for, for right now, if you include climate, uh, climatology, probably the most responsible thing to do when making a forecast for a city like Chicago would be to just keep it frigid, but nothing more than that. And we would keep the, the potential historical cold will be just over in the perhaps the northern Minnesota area or North Dakota area. Those places. This We've had Arctic outbreaks. The synoptic setup is similar to 1983. You, you, in 1989 as well. The, these are the... We have records in the Carolina in West in the Carolinas and West Virginia, or one of those states, which still stand the single on the East Coast. We have records that still stand from 1983. In the Midwest, it's a double pushit. It's obvious we still have records that stand from 1983 because the bitter cold was was so intense. In fact, the coldest temperature ever in Chicago occurred in December 1983. I think it was December 24th. I. Uh, the timing of this, by the way, it's also the timing is very similar. Well, I've, if we're talking about record low for the dates, they, this okay. So we have it is a piece of the polar vortex. It is here's another thing: the high pressure that's expected to move in towards the end of next week, according to some models, will will also break a record in barometric pressure. This will be the strongest high pressure that has ever occurred. In the United States, I think 30.6, 31. Point, is it 31. Point, I, I don't know the exact amount. Uh, maybe we'll look that up. But there's a it's moving into Montana. Uh, uh, you know, if, if this if that model materializes, which is a good possibility. And even if it doesn't, even if it doesn't, so if it doesn't, it won't be a record-breaking high pressure, but close to it. So we have that. All that's coming in Wednesday and Thursday. So let's explain this over here. We have Arctic air that's going to be moving in already for the weekend. Arctic air for the Midwest, that moves on to the East Coast. We're going to see snow in the New England area. Snow. The coastal cities, solid heavy rain for the coastal cities. That's uh, You might even get, might, perhaps, some snow at the very end. Especially up north, per- perhaps. Okay, so then we move on to that arc. That's what, okay. 
We have the snow in the Midwest just goes on and on. It's the upper Midwest, it just goes on and on. Next week, so we have a period of dry weather taking place Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Now, what's going to be happening in the middle of the week? First of all, there's a low pressure system that might be developing over in Oklahoma. If it does, there's it might have moisture associated with it. So there might be precipitation in Oklahoma. This might actually happen as early as Monday night. I believe Monday night. We'll have to look into that too. Okay, so we have a lot of doubts in regards to that. There's a low pressure system. What's, there's more confidence in this strong low pressure system coming out of Canada. I... Uh, a strong storm system coming out of Canada with a strong, the main thing is the strong Arctic front that moves across the area on Thursday. So the thing, in this is a solid Arctic front, which will have snow along the front. So, you know, whether you're affected by the actual system itself, where you would get several inches of snow in most likelihood, but nothing more, if it's a northern system, just a few inches of snow, perhaps two to four inches, something like that, maybe with high snow to water ratios, you can squeeze out a six inch snowstorm from this. But usually those things do not have as much moisture as the thing that comes from the south. The question is, what is going to go on with that low pressure system in Oklahoma? So right now, meteorologists seem to be ignoring it. But some have made mention of that type of a possibility of some type of a low pressure developing there and then moving like like either a panhandle hook moving across the Midwest. It's common for storm systems to develop along the boundary of bitter cold air and warm air. We're going to have that next week. So the right now. The, the models are not going to really pick up on that. You're just going to see the original, the low pressure system with its associated surface cold front coming out of Canada with the Siberian air behind it pushing temperatures below zero. Even in the Chicago area, temperatures dropping below zero is a good possibility. The European computer model shows this clear and even the GFS model that nighttime temperatures in at least parts of the area will be below zero. There might be, it might be worse than that, but it might be colder than that. In fact, teens, if you go into Wisconsin, the high temperatures in the single digits below zero is a possibility. So we have these, we have that system. Once that system moves into the Midwest, so a storm system might develop over in the southern panhandles and produce a heavy snowmaker. If that happens, it will also slow down the front. So the timing of the front is in question for the East Coast, more so for the East Coast, because the question is, will a storm system develop in the Midwest? If a storm system develops in the Midwest, then the front stalls. And then by the time the Arctic air heats, hits the East Coast, it's very cold, but it, it's not below zero. It's just very cold, solid Arctic air, but it has moderated some. If there's no storm system that develops along the front in the Midwest, then the Arctic air goes straight into the East Coast. It still is a moderated form than what the Midwest will be getting, but it will be significantly colder. Either way, either way, no matter what... I, there's a low, you can never say no matter what this far out, but a low, these two possibilities, both of them allow for a powerful storm system to develop off the mid Atlantic, the classic, the mid Atlantic area, a storm system developing off probably the coast of North Carolina. It's even possible for it to be further south than that, but that's a possibility. It's, the reason I say it could be further south than that is because of the significance of the cold air of what's coming in. This is not exactly normal, what's happening next week. It's happened several times in our past, but it is not a normal occurrence. So the things might be forming a little bit further south than usual. So like instead of a Colorado low, it's kind of might really be developing over Oklahoma or it might at least uh, dip south. But more significantly for the east coast, we also... We're also going to have to speak about Atlanta, Georgia in just a moment. 
uh, as well, because they're not totally out of the woods on this one either. According to the National Weather Service of Atlanta, Georgia, there could be fr- some type of frozen precipitation midweek in the places north of Atlanta. I was not able to find that when I looked at the European computer model or the GFS model. So I don't know where they get their information from, but they they get it from solid places, of course. We're dealing with the National Weather Service. So that would be sometime midweek next week, but probably places to the north and west of that area. That, so they're not out of the woods either. So to just, but in any case, a low pressure system, this is an important thing to mention uh, because this is for next, not this weekend, but for next weekend, of the, the, everywhere, the whole country, I, I, I've not checked the West Coast, but sig- very significant weather could be going on in all the cities that you know, just the Midwest, the t- t- very cold in Texas as well, uh, the East Coast. So I, I'm making mention of the storm system for the East Coast because if you hear the numbers of the, in the intensity of the low pressure, it's totally phenomenal, totally phenomenal. It's equi- probably equivalent to that's the strength of that high pressure that moves into Montana, that, that record-breaking high pressure. The European computer model shows a storm system on the East Coast of t- uh, already strong from the start. 29.2 from the start, intensifying and intensifying rapidly to 28.7, and then the model gets cut off. I, I don't, that's already by Friday. I don't even know, you know, I, the syst, that system also, it's intensifying so quickly that it's spinning westward. <clears throat> it's going to be spinning westward. Again, that thing is going to start to move northwest. So you could have. The coastal cities might end up with amazingly rain. They might end up with rain from this storm system. This is a far way out, but you get some area on the East Coast is likely going to get totally clobbered with very heavy snow. That's been a, first of all, heavy snow has been a theme just this, so far this winter, starting with that Buffalo event. We now have, for the second time at least in the Dakotas, a two foot storm this year. And and then we have another foot on the way, another foot on the way from another that you could connect it to the first. It might sound like it's connected, but really it's it's deserving of a of a name in its own right. It has its its own system. You don't even need it has its own merits. Forget about the first one. This system itself is a strong storm system and it's the intensification that's taking place that's what's going to do it. Not necessarily the deep. It's not the fact. A lot of times when a storm is intensifying, even if the low pressure is not as deep, it's not as low as another storm. But if it's in a strengthening phase, it has more of a dramatic impact and more dramatic stuff happen with that storm. So that's what's going on. Uh, we have the tornadoes and the severe weather, which continues down. Uh, it's moved a little bit further east, down in the southeast. I don't know how warm the temperatures are. I have not looked into that. <clears throat> I, I know we haven't covered everything because it's not it's not possible. There's too much going on, but it's been 38 minutes, and I think we covered the basic the the basic things that I'm aware of, and t- which is the the unique stuff that's going on over the next 10 days. To say it in one minute. It's just the titles. We have the real strong Colorado low that developed. We have a secondary area of low pressure that's going to be even stronger than the first, which is, and then we have the another area of low pressure also connected, which develops on the East Coast, which is developing into a full force nor'easter. We have the first area of low pressure has Arctic air on the backside, producing heavy, a two foot snowstorm. The second area of low pressure, which is stronger than the first, the strength of the storm itself and the the rapidly intensification of the storm itself will produce its own cold air. That's going to produce dynamic cooling, and that's going to change the precipitation over to snow. Even if it doesn't change over to snow, the rainfall rates itself 
in the time of the year that it's happening will likely produce flooding in many locations. That's for the Midwest. That's for Illinois, Wisconsin, perhaps even Thunder, perhaps Missouri. Many, uh, we have places down south that might be getting six inches of rain, four more inches of rain, maybe even more. Okay, I, I, I saw places t- about six inches European model. Okay, now we go over to the, and that's after rain already has fallen. And then we have this, uh, the nor'easter, which is all part of the system. The nor'easter in it of itself, we also have dynamic cooling occurring on that one. And we have some Arctic air coming in for that one. We have the Siberian, a lot of times this is called the Siberian Express weather pattern that a very good chance could be developing next week around Thursday for the Chicago area, probably even earlier for places out in the plains. And then we have the possibility of a Midwestern storm forming towards the end of next week. And we have a possibility, a higher probability of an East Coast storm, maybe even a historical one forming on the East Coast towards Thursday, Friday or Saturday of next weekend. And the timing of the Arctic air is dependent on whether a Midwest Southern storm forms. Either way, there's going to be the Northern storm, which is not going to be that intense. Uh, because of its, it does will not have much moisture to it, along with snowfall from the front itself. So I would imagine a large part of the country will have probably at least some snow on the ground. A large part because of that front. Any area that's getting hit by that front will likely get snowfall. It might just be a brief, intense snow shower, but there will be snow in a large part of this country, likely some point during next week. And then, yeah. Then you have these three low pressure, uh, another three low pressure systems to talk about next week: the northern one, possible Oklahoma one, and then the East Coast one. You have been listening to the podcast "Weather with Enthusiasm." You will now hear a one-minute trailer. Several additional feet of snow is expected by Monday morning. (gasps) Yes! We have a powerhouse typhoon which has developed off in the Pacific Ocean. A big shockeroo to many of you. This is especially true in regards to what's going to be going on in Alaska. We have parts of the world that are so hot right now. Temperatures are expected to go into the low 130s. Hey, we have a special guest on our show. Uh, what is your name? A heat wave that's going to be headed to the A-Lot area. We're going to have to wait before we get into the next excitement. We're going from one extreme to the next extreme. 27.1 parametric pressure. Feet of snow are falling in Japan. Oh my gosh. Weather. That's a time of celebration. Just Google weather with enthusiasm and they're all going to come up.